Welcome to Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. Today's program is on anti-bullying. I'm Keith Halperin, and this is my co-host, Will Vernick. Tell us about your shirt. I'm glad you asked. This is my la my latest USF Don sh basketball shirt. I got this from a, a, a USF Don's basketball game. I go to the game... I go to their games every. I go to their games very often. The games are open to are open to the public. In fact, the Dons just won the national championships. Excellent. Our guests today include uh, Chris Cook, direct service uh, professional of uh, Arc San Francisco, and for uh, personal perspective, uh, our uh, co-host uh, Stacy Kennedy. Will, if you can take it from there. Gladly. Chris C Cook, let's start out with the questions. First question, what is the genesis of this project? Why did the ARC develop it? Well, the ARC's goal is to empower our clients in every aspect of their lives, whether it's at home or on their job or wherever. We want uh, our clients to live as independently and have as many choices as possible. And we also, in addition to that, I think it's very important that our clients also develop a confident sense of a personal identity and sexuality. Uh, one of the reasons why we started this is because it, bullying is so common. Um, nine out of 10 LGBT youth report being bully, and the same percentage actually applies for our clients. So uh, it's really important that they have the tools in order to be able to stand up to bullying um, the thing is, is that all people with disabilities get bullied as well. So not, you know, so whether you're, you're from the LGBT community or whether you're straight, if you have a disability, you're far more likely to be bullied. Can you walk, walk us through the project, its structure? Well, actually, before I get to that, actually, I wanted to kind of go into a few more things about, um, uh, how we got this started, we reached out to the LGBT Center in San Francisco, and they helped us develop our anti-bullying curriculum. Uh, recently, we have developed an educational program at the ARC where we offer classes to clients, and the anti-bullying class has been offered for about the last three and a half years, and I started teaching that at, at the start of it. Um, but the overall program has been around for about five years, the anti-bullying campaign at the ARC. Who can participate? Well, people who can participate, all the classes that we offer are designed for adults with developmental disabilities. Um, and that is a wide range of clients, not just uh, folks with autism, but also with other uh, developmental disabilities, such as cerebral palsy or Down syndrome. Um, but actually, uh, I'd like to talk about the project a little bit about the structure, Will. Would that be OK? That, that'd, be, that'd be perfect. Well, what we want to do is we want to train a new generation of leaders at the ARC. And really, an ally is a leader. So we have uh, a couple of classes that we teach in order to get more awareness about how to stop bullying, whether, it's whether you're being bullied or whether you find yourself bullying others. So it's really important uh, that we understand what bullying is and how to uh, really... Uh, organized against it as a community. Um, in my class, uh, we go over basically the five types of bullying. Uh, gossip, exclusion, cyberbullying, physical, and verbal bullying. And the five key players as well. It's, they're kind of like players in a movie. Uh, although, of course, this is happening in real life. A lot of folks think that the a bullying incident is basically just the target and the bully, but that's not true. Uh, in the class, uh, clients learn about the other roles that people tend to play in a bullying incident. Not just the target or the bully, but there's also the follower who helps the bully. There's also uh, the bystander, who's the type of person that stands there and kind of wishes they could do something, but they just don't know how to help. And also, they might be afraid that the bully might turn on them so there's a bystander there that will kind of watch and maybe wish that they could do something, but they're not sure. And then the most important part is the ally. I get back to that word. 
the ally is the most in, important player in a bullying scenario because they're the one that comes in and actually stands up to bullying and does something uh, in a positive way uh, in order to defuse or stop the bullying incident. So those are kind of the, I could go on about uh, the class, but I don't want to for, the, you know, for what time we have today, but that's kind of an overview of the concepts that we study in the anti-bullying course in order to maybe have a new generation of leaders or allies at the ARC in order to even stop bullying even more. So we have an awareness at the ARC and beyond. And if someone sees bullying occurring, what should they do? Well, if you see a bullying incident, there are basically five things you want to remember. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to ignore the bully, and that's hard. Um, sometimes people are really reactive to things that they find very troubling. Uh, myself, I can say that I, I have a little bit of a challenge with that. If I see a bullying incident, I definitely feel something is wrong. Um, so, but still, the best thing to do is ignore the bully. Now, if it escalates and there's verbal harassment, it continues, um, you ask the bully to please stop. And that's not always easy because you're being, you know, you're being verbally or physically attacked. Uh, and it's not easy to be positive and calm, but that's the best way to handle it at this point. If you're still harassed, you walk away. And if you're followed and threatened with physical harm, this is where it gets serious, okay? This is where you want to look around for some allies right there in the general area. Look around you, ask for help. It's okay to do, um, you know, often there's a stranger out there that is willing to help. But if that's not available, the next thing that I suggest to clients is that they either text or call a friend that they know might be very close by. They could be over the next block or something like that. But if it looks like physical harm is still imminent, that's when I instruct uh, folks to call the police. At that point, if physical harm still seems uh, imminent after all of these measures that have been taken, it's a 911 call at that point. And that's when you want to actually call the police. So those would be the steps for trying to defuse a bullying incident if it, if it continues to escalate. Interesting. Uh, Keith, Keith, over to you. Thank you. I'm curious, uh, how did you, you yourself get involved in this particular program? Well, um, the ARC had been doing the program for about a year, year and a half already, and I thought that teaching the classes would be a really nice supplement to that. Uh, again, to create awareness for, you know, our community that we, you know, that we have as many ARC allies as we can. Um, so I felt that, you know, teaching the course was a really good way in order to start getting the concepts out there. And ho hopefully, you know, they get passed around to other clients who haven't taken the course. Very interesting. Um, San Francisco has a reputation for being a very progressive and tolerant city. So when you mentioned that nine out of 10 uh, disabled uh, individuals as well as nine out of 10 LGBTQ uh, folks are a victim of bullying, is that nationwide or is that here? Well, that's actually, yeah, that's actually here. Um, nationwide, it's pretty much, uh, it is pretty much uniform as far as the numbers go. Um, 2% of the population is LGBT, and those numbers are pretty much uh, proportional to our folks over at the ARC, yes. Interesting. Um, it seems, if I understand you properly, that your courses are designed for those who are being or potentially being bullied, is that correct? That's correct, um, and that's, those are the folks that, are, that we say, hey, let's, there's an immediate need for, for you for this course. And one of the things that I try to really highlight is that this isn't because of you. This is because of somebody else who's bullying you. And so uh, the first thing that you try to make sure is that, that people know that it's not their fault they're be, that they're being bullied. Bullies are really great at shifting the blame to others. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's one of the reoccurring themes that we talk about in my class is that it's not your fault. And this, but still, there's something that you need to do to self-advocate. Okay. Does the ARC offer any types of uh, self-defense uh, for those 
uh, individuals who are interested who feel that they, when they get to the state of uh, physical endangerment, might want a means of uh, protecting themselves? Well, um, the ARC doesn't offer any self-defense classes. Um, most of the classes that have to do with any kind of exercise or motion would be something like we have for, offer a Zumba course and we mm -hmm. offer yoga and, and a movement class. But what we do is we will uh, ask around the community who would like to work with the ARC on uh, self-defense. And actually there's an Aikido studio right around the corner. I really wish I could remember the gentleman's name to give him a plug. Mm -hmm. But there's been uh, an Aikido class oh, for the last five years. So there are good ways for clients to get exercise and also self-defense. Uh, hopefully that's not needed, but yes, it, it, it is a way to make sure that you're not injured. Excellent. Yeah. Um, over the years of the program and your involvement, what uh, changes have you noticed, uh, either in its reception in the community, the growth of the course, or, or basically could you elaborate? As far as the course itself and kind of the, maybe the changes I've seen. Uh, yes, around, yeah. both in the community and in the larger community and its uh, uh, treatment of uh, bullying and, and acceptance or non-acceptance of it. Well, I think, you know, just starting with the ARC, we've, I think we've, the clients have done a really good job of trying to put as much of this into practice as possible. You know, you can talk about this stuff in a class, in theory, mm -hmm. but what it comes down to is, of course, when you're actually out there and a real incident occurs, what do I do? And on top of that, how do I take the steps to avoid one of those in the first case? Mm -hmm. And there are some things that we talk about in the course that will help you prepare for that. Um, I talked a little bit ago about if you're actually involved in a bullying incident. Right now, what I'd like to talk about is some general guidelines in the course uh, that we talk about for avoiding bullying in the mm -hmm. first place. Um, number one, you want to surround yourself with positive people that have your common interests. It's very important. Um, you're more likely to have people that share your same values. And so if you're the kind of person that's against bullying, then you know the kind of people you hang out with probably should be that way too. So that there's a, there's a group effort. It's not just one person. All of us collectively can help stop bullying. It takes work, but we're doing it over the arc. So yeah, that's the first thing that we talk about. Next thing, you want to create a list of all the things that make you special and wonderful. Okay, Not to sound too sappy, but it is really a great positive mental exercise. The more positively you feel about yourself, less likely you're going to allow a bully to make you feel negative about yourself. So think about all the things that make you special is one of the things we talk about. And then um, I would say the, of next importance is that you want to try to travel in groups whenever possible. Bullies are a lot more opportunistic if it's just you. But if you have some friends around you, more likely to come out of that situation to where you know it stops. Next thing we talk about would be you want to seek advice from a trusted friend. If you're getting bullied and it doesn't seem like there is a, a solution that you can come to yourself, it's really important to reach out and get help. It's okay. That's something that we talk about. It's okay to get help. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, so you want to seek advice from a trusted source, like a family, close friends, or maybe even your instructor at the ARC, uh, whoever you feel comfortable talking to. If you feel like things are still very, very hopeless and oh, I'm being bullied and I can't find a way out of this, next thing to do is we suggest counseling. And the ARC does work with some, uh, some uh, uh, service organizations that specialize in, in therapy. Uh, OMI over on Ocean Avenue and also uh, the Liberation Institute are both really good local nonprofit resources for our clients to get therapy because it's really important uh, to take care of yourself. Um, if you've been bullied, a lot of the time it really helps to talk with a licensed mental health professional. Interesting. Um, and I keep saying that because it is. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Does the ARC do anything for um, bullying abatement? In other words, uh, from what I've understood is the, the programs are designed for pe people who are potentially bullied. 
But you did sort of beginning uh, of the program allude to how to avoid being a bully yourself. Can you Correct. elaborate on that? Yeah, and we did talk a little while ago about how it's primarily the you know, it's really important that people who are being bullied take the class, but right. it's it's very important also that people who are bullying take the class, which there are different types in there. There are people who, you know, are, are more likely to bully others compared to, you know, these individuals over here who are being bullied. Uh, has to do with very common things we're familiar with. There's a, there's a you know, everywhere you go, there's going to be the popular crowd and then there's going to be the outsider crowd. And we want to try to break down that wall right there. So I feel like I've noticed some changes in some clients I've known for a little while. They've taken the course a couple of times. Sometimes they need to repeat it. Uh, and for those who bully, it's really important for them to know the effects of what they do. Um, I've seen it to where, you know, sometimes bullies don't even know that they're bullying. Uh, mm. they're, they're for people with, a very, let's say, a very jocular sense of humor or, you know, that sort of a thing. We want them to be aware that, you know, words can hurt. You know, the old sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's one of the oldest myths. I mean, words do hurt. All of it is important to stop, whether it's physical, whether it's uh, verbal bullying, whether mm -hmm. it's cyberbullying, whether it's, you know, uh, gossip or exclusion, all of those need to be stopped. Or at least, as I, I talk about in the class, it's here, we want it down here. Okay. Chris, earlier on you mentioned about allies. How would you get them? How do you become one? Well, at the ARC, our goal is to train a whole other generation of leaders, and that's another word for ally, really. It's somebody who's a, a leader in a, in a positive way. Uh, and we want our folks to be empowered to respond to all the external pressures of bullying, feel confident, well-respected, and accepted for who they are, and everybody deserves this. Um, so basically what we do is, after a client has completed the eight-week anti-bullying course, they have the opportunity to go to ARC Allies. And what they do there is they study leaders that all of us are very familiar with. Uh, some examples might be Mother Teresa, uh, MLK, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, Gandhi is another one they look at, and there's a few others. And so they study the kind of the history of various leaders of how they stood up to adversity with huge odds and still were able to be successful at you know reaching a goal and so I, we really feel like at the arc really a leader is an ally very good to hear over the years uh, and you mentioned that it's been five years since the project has been uh, mm -hmm. going on it's grown substantially um, how do you anticipate that the program will grow in the future? Well, right now we're in the middle of the process of, of uh, trying to raise money for 14 new ARC allies this summer. So for the classes that would require, we're trying to raise some money, um, and people can donate to our anti-bullying campaign. Uh, I'd like to give you a website. It's arcantibullying.org. Arc antibullying.org and any donation you can make would really help our cause so yeah that's we're trying to uh, you know that would be funding so that we can have 14 more ARC allies and those 14 will make a difference beyond just those people excellent are there any additional ways that uh, people can help the ARC and its anti-bullying campaign well, besides um, making a donation, um, there are volunteer opportunities at the ARC. I'm not really well-versed in that, but I can just say in general, if you're very interested in uh, volunteering at the ARC, you can call our main number at 415-255-7200. What was that number again, please? 415-255-7200 for the ARC of San Francisco. Excellent. Uh, any final words in uh, wrapping up? Well, I'd just like to say thanks a lot for having me, uh, Will, and, um, sorry, Keith. Keith. <laughs> it's Keith. I'm bad with names. Keith. <laughs> this man's been questioning me all day, and I forgot his name. <laughs> it's all good. No worries. I'd like to thank you for having me on your show. Uh, I think it's really important to spread this message and just how, you know, there's little things you can do, like, you know, uh, you can donate your time, or you can volunteer, or you can do something like, you know, 
not use certain language that, that you know, that is not good, such as the R word. Um, there's all kinds of ways you can help in our cause to stop bullying. Well, we're very glad you, you came. Uh, we're very pleased with the work that you're doing for the community, and we look forward to hearing from you and uh, many other good things from the art in the future. Thanks again. Thanks for having me. And we look forward to ha forward to hearing about your anti-bullying campaign so someday. Thank you, Will. For our final segment, we're going to have our producer, Matt McIntyre, and our co-host, Stacy Kennedy give their own perspectives on bullying. Hello. Um, well, I um, pretty much wanted to talk about my experience with bullying because I, um, I mean, I, this pretty much goes on from like from being a kid up to like, I don't know, certain moments of, you know, like up to now. Um, I mean, these days I can, you know, manage it like, you know, better or so. That it's told that like humor usually is a way of just to brush things off, but sometimes not even that works. If you're just not at your A game, um, then you know what better way to just I don't know. I mean, I, it's it's true. I ignoring, you know, I've done that, you know, um, and then. <clears throat> I um, took a self-defense class like for a while, like or so. But you know, it's really about like not fighting, like or so. And the first thing, like you said, you want to do is like ignore, walk away. And if it's still happening, um, then you know, call the police. Um, and so, yeah, I m my experience with m with bullying is definitely it, it just sometimes it, it makes me wonder, like. You know, true. Some people probably don't even know that they're doing it, or they. Some people do know that they do. They just don't care, and you wonder if they really, if they try to take it from another point of view. Like, you know, do they ever try and put the victim in the vic themselves in the victim's shoes and see what this is like? But that's the thing. If um, they are obviously bullying because they've been bullied, um, and some are just complete jerks just for whatever like reason. You know, it, it's sad, um, but. But but it's there. So so yeah. Um, over the, uh, Matt and I like discovered you know a couple of things on the bus like Muni like or so. Um, you know some guy was like trying to hit on me and he even saw us holding hands. Um, but you know we ignored it. You know there's times he looked up and it was just like dude can you please stop. You know didn't say it but wanted to. But this guy would kept going on and on and on. Even the bus driver would turn around and go dude. You know he he was sticking up us um so yeah on public transportation you know how some people could be inappropriate on it too you know in whatever mentality that they're in um and there was uh, another moment that he and i were just moving over for some woman to you know who seemed like disabled um just to sit and another person another couple was doing the same thing they said don't take pity on me you know type of thing and it turned out she was just like really nasty and then she was like Dude, what are you doing to your man? Keep your hands off. Um, but then she was kicked off the bus because she called a bus driver her name. So after a while, it's something we just, like, laughed about. But, you know, when there's situations that kind of seem just <coughs> really uh, uncomfortable and maybe almost to a point where it's dangerous, you know, we would just move to the other part of the bus or whatever area where there's no people like that um, that will... Um, that will verbally or physically hurt you or so. Um, so, but how about you? One of the major antagonists I've seen in my life is known, <coughs> as, the, known as the cyber bully. Usually on forums, uh, in places that you post, I don't, and comment sections on YouTube and any other places like Blip or any other web, entertainment website, there's always going to be that someone who is going to get off on giving you such a harsh criticism over over a minute little itty bitty indiscrepancy such as there's such as on such as the internet and in in a broad perspective the internet loves hate and they love seeing people hate on other ha haters over little things let's say for example 
someone goes to a forum discussion about what pizza they like. Someone says cheese. And someone says pepperoni. And then immediately the cheese person says, I will end you. It's that sort of thing that really gets under my skin. And it's far too common in all sorts of uh, places on the internet. Even discussions about entertainment from the 80s and 90s can, co can turn into a flame war over who was right. And then, there's all, and then there's also the trolls. The denizens of the internet that live underneath the bridge between link, between website and link. And they <coughs> just love to just get under someone's skin just for the sake of making them miserable, making them depressed and sad to the point where they, the common thing for any bully to say to a victim is to kill themselves and to become, quote-unquote, an hero. And then they just laugh at their uh, suicide attempt or, or their passing of their own life. And the only way to stop this sort of conflict is to either ignore the troll, fight back with your words, or report them to any, any person out there, whether it be a police officer or peace officer, but you need to have the right evidence to prove that this person is causing you a lot of harm. Chris, would you care to comment on uh, Matt and Stacy's uh, stories? Sure, yeah. Um, I noticed that Matt brought up uh, cyberbullying, and um, you know the thing that we talk about at the at, in the art uh, anti-bullying class is that if you come across cyberbullying, best way to, to deal with it is ignore it. But if it's persistent and it continues, you know you have the right to go ahead and you know if it's Facebook, let's say, uh, to either delete or unfriend the bully. I mean, you have that right. It's your page. So yeah, I mean the idea is you ignore the bully if you if you come across some troll and if you you know are still being harassed you you have the right to either delete or unfriend them block them. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we talk about in the class is don't be afraid to report somebody. You know, a, a social media site like Facebook is it's a tool. We want to use the tool properly, and if we don't, we could, this is where we can run into trouble. But if we use uh, Facebook in a way that is, you know, good for us, then it's it's a better experience. That's not to say that there isn't a lot of challenges out there to deal with with cyberbullying, but the best practice is remember that it's your page, and remember that you have the right to set boundaries. Remember, you can visit antibullying dot dot com. Here is the text of the pledge we have posted, along with donate button at at www.antibullying arc antibullying.org because bullying stops with, uh, with us. Now right now, Will's going to read the pledge that you'll see on the website. Go ahead, Will. Sure thing. I pledge to spread this message to my friends, family, and neighbors. I'll speak up against bullying when, whenever I see it at school and at work. I'll provide support for people with developmental disabilities. I will not use the words retard, retarded, or turd. I'll provide support for gay, bisexual, transgender and other individuals right so even if you can't donate that's fine you know not not everybody has the money to donate but you can still do your part by you know kind of taking it making your own pledge to stop bullying it always stops with us and i noticed that you had brought up some uh some incidents on muni that you had gone through and that's this is common you know mm -hmm. not just for our our clients at the ARC, but everyone mm -hmm. goes through some kind of bullying on Muni. Unfortunately, it's going to happen. Right. You're there with a bunch of strangers you've never met before. <laughs> so the best thing to do if you're bullied on Muni is to ignore them. And like I said before, it's very difficult to do that because, you know, sometimes it's hard. This is wrong. This, this, what's happening to me is wrong. But we also need to think about what can we do to make the situation best for ourselves. Right. Keep in mind that, you know, the bully doesn't really care about how you feel. Right, exactly. You know, as it, how, how you, you're right about that earlier. Yeah. So it's so unfortunately, since they don't have or are not willing to have the empathy for others that are different than them or maybe they feel like they took their seat or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. it is, 
it's still important that we we stand our ground with positivity and Absolutely. and as hard as it's to do because that's the best way to diffuse the incident. Mm -hmm. If we if we go negative, then it only escalates. No, of course. Yeah. yeah. Would you agree that you know you don't have to change? You could still be yourself. However, like your appearance, of like be careful how you look at them, just or don't look at them like at all. Don't dress too attractive until you get to the destination where you can feel comfortable that way. Would you well, agree with that? I think people ought to be able to dress the way they want. Yeah. Um, and I also think that you know that's again we go back to the whole thing. It's not the target's fault. Yeah. Whoever's being targeted, it's not their fault. So this is really important to remember because sure. those are the kind of things that can lead to depression and uh -huh. other negative feelings that are that are you know within the target and it's not fair because it's not, it's not about us it's mm -hmm. about the bully yeah, yeah yeah so those are difficult things to do but the best thing on muni is ignore them and if they mm -hmm. persist i think you had a really good strategy of getting the bus driver involved it's their bus they're the yeah. authority figure that can help you immediately i mean we didn't even ask for help he heard it and he turned around and went do stop and that's yeah. a good bus driver that was good. not all of the muni yeah. uh operators will do that so right, you, right. you got lucky there unfortunately Thank sometimes you. diffusing bullying is put in the hands of the passengers and we just need to do our best we sure. can sure yeah. thank you mm -hmm. well any final words will um i i want the anti-bullying campaign seems to to be on a, on a good on a good turning point Seems like we got a lot of support from the ARC and and the community, and 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 next and next time next time you ride a bus, I'm I'm sure the bus the bus driver will be more aware of of the of the bullying passengers. Mm -hmm. There's a very mean crossing guard. <laughs> Thank you, Will. That's our show for this week. And as always, if you have something to say, something to show, something to do. We'd love to have you on our program. So for Autism Life on the Autism Spectrum, I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And I'm Chris Cook. Stacey Kennedy. And Matthew McIntyre. Have a great week.